And we are back. Another episode of the Ads and Dunks podcast exclusively brought to you by the Oz American Aces. And of course, my name's Adam Treloran and, and uh, my best mate and host, Josh Dunkley. What an episode this is. Um, obviously been a massive week for both of us. But the most important thing about this episode, well, this past week gone by, number one sports podcast in Australia. How good? How good's that, mate? <laughs> Bloody rap to be here, we'll but rap to be involved. <laughs> yeah, we'll claim it. We'll... um. Brado, one of our well, one of our producers just off air was saying, you and I were the ones who just dragged the Oz American Aces um, across the line <laughs> to the number one spot for the week. So um, we'll claim it. Maybe Tommy has to take you and I out for dinner. That'd be nice. He uh, probably <laughs> owes us a little bit after that. Um, <laughs> seeing those charts, but yeah, I actually saw that today. I popped up and I sent it to our group text, and I was like, "Geez, that's actually not a bad, not a bad thing to have in the kit bag, mate." Number one podcast yeah. or sporting podcast in Australia. Yes, it was. Uh, it was the only win you really had this week, wasn't it? <laughs> okay, here he goes. Already started. No, you're right. You're right. I'm willing no, to cop the heat, mate. Uh, willing to cop it. <laughs> no, no. Obviously, we obviously had our game, which is what most people want us to talk about. Which is probably was going to be the obvious um, topic on the podcast. But um, yeah, I guess what, what what's your first um, initial reactions post game? I mean, I know it's obviously four or five days later, but, um, you know, we exchanged a few text messages straight after the game and obviously caught up the day after. What, um, you know, how, how are you feeling? <laughs> oh, I mean, initially it was pretty disappointing to to not obviously play our best footy against you guys, but credit to you guys. We knew that you were going to come out with the heat um, that you did in the first quarter and they started really well. And, yeah, it was just a – it was a bit of an arm wrestle for the – quite some time there I thought and uh, yeah you guys probably got your game going a little bit more than what we did and we couldn't really convert on the scoreboard so we had ample opportunities to um, well a lot of opportunities to I don't know take it up to years but unfortunately we didn't make the most of them and yeah so it was a little bit disappointing post game but I feel like the environment the the club everyone was really um, trying to be upbeat and you know, we didn't get beaten badly like we did in round one. So I think the way that we were able to really grind it out against you guys and no, people people can talk all they like in the media, but the dogs, like as your team, like you've got a great team and you know that mm. inside your mm. four walls and it's, yeah, anyone that comes up against you is going to have a, a tough game and I don't think anyone else could could say that otherwise. So um, for me, it was a, it was a tough outing, um, obviously first one against you and, and all the boys, so it was nice to get it over and done with, and now we move forward. Are you glad that it's over with early? So obviously you would have marked it on your calendar. We all did, but are you glad that you know now it's gone by, and or well, hopefully the next time uh, we face off against each other, um, we're not in the home and away season this year. But it'd be pretty cool if if it's a finals. But even beyond that, probably not going to be like the way it was on the weekend. Are you glad that it's done? Uh, personally, yeah, I do think that. Uh, you know, it's a bit of a build up and playing against, you know, yourself and all the all the other boys as well. It was tough to sort of mentally prepare, but also you knew the heat was coming. Um, the first bounce, I remember you stuck an E into me, tried to jump on top <laughs> at some point there. <laughs> Actually, we gotta talk about we gotta talk about when there was a goal kicked. I don't know if we can get behind oh, the goal. Oh yes. Oh, when yes. you come down and you ran from about fifty meters away to celebrate <laughs> and you try to shirk me. Like, just try to little, give me a little one. And then I was like, bang, and I'll whack you. And yeah, you, you got me a good running. one, actually. <laughs> you got me a good one. That hurt a little bit. Got me right on the gas. Oh. But there's definitely, there's definitely vision of it because um, was I with you when we, when we re-watched that little bit of it? I don't think I was, was I? Nah, no, no, no. I mustn't have been. I must have been re-watching the game um, at home. And I, was, I must have been. One of my mates must have been around because I said, oh, watch this. And you could actually see the vision. You can see, I think Mara really? kicks the goal and as you, as I'm running along the screen, you like have this smile on your face and as you said, I like kind of shirk you and you actually get me in the guts. <laughs> oh, it was quite funny. It was very funny. I love that. To finally get it over and done with, I spoke about it post-game, I think, uh, on the TV was um, it draws that line in the sand. I think you'd know yourself playing against your old side um, a couple of times is mm. you always – you feel you still feel like you're attached to the footy club until you actually run out there and play against them and try and you're trying to beat them, I guess, in a way. So uh, that's I'm at that stage now, and I'm looking forward to yeah potentially pl- playing this again later in the season. But um, 
at the moment. We're looking forward to this week. What about um, the booing factor? We spoke about it obviously <laughs> last week that oh, I didn't think you were going to get many boos, um, which I still don't think it was. Like you got you got booed. Don't get me wrong, you got booed. You definitely got booed. But <laughs> I don't think it was. I don't think it was all the time, was it? Or maybe I was just. I mean, I heard oh, it, it about was twenty all the times. Time. In the, I heard it about twenty times in the first quarter because that's how many times you had the footy. But um, <laughs> after that, I didn't. Don't think I really heard it much. Yeah, I thought it was. You know, it's you sort of subconsciously hear it in the back of your mind. Um, it doesn't, and it, and that goes along with all the abuse that you sort of cop over the fence as well. <laughs> like it's always, you can always hear someone like yelling out to you when you're close to the boundary line. So, yeah, yeah I mean, it was, it was uh, like, yeah, I don't know. It's you can either talk about it two ways. I, I personally don't uh, really agree with it in a sense, like. You, People are there to, you know, everyone sort of gave them, got, got around me at the best and fairest. And, mm. um, you know, obviously there's a lot of supporters that still like me, but then others can stand up and, and yell stuff out over the fence that, <laughs> you know, we talk about abuse and stuff and everyone yeah. cracks it at people talking. And, I mean, yes, I left the football club, but I've still got great connections. I've still got so much. Um, I'm so thankful for what they did for me. Like I didn't leave on bad terms. So it's like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't really agree with it, but it didn't really affect me and I just played footy. So it is disappointing though to um to hear some of the stuff that you do here on field, especially when you, yeah, I felt like I gave my all to that football club. Well, I actually think that's well said from people who, you know, moving forward will probably move footy clubs. It's, it's obviously going to happen in our industry. So anyone listening to that piece of advice, you're right because – at the end of the day, it is only a game of football and um, for what you contributed to the footy club, I mean, I always talk about it, but you won a premiership and um, a best and fairest and, you know, you achieved a lot, played 100 games, you achieved a lot of great things at the footy club and you're always going to be remembered, remembered um, at the Western Bulldogs. So you're spot on. Um, I think largely most people love you. I know from the comments that, you know, I, I hear from the Western Bulldogs fans that we get and um, at training and whatnot, they were always saying, make sure when you see Josh, you give him a hug and, and give him a cuddle and this and that. But um, I felt like you, um, the way you played and the way you took on, you know, all that um, booing, I guess, from a frustrating point of view, you played really well. So um, well done. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Thank you. I do want to thank, <laughs> but, I actually do want to thank the uh, some of the Doggies fans for messaging me too. Like uh, there's some that I've sort of kept in contact with over the journey and they've been great along the way. And they still reach out and send me messages. So to those ones, thank you. Um, to the others, probably not so much a thanks, but <laughs> yeah, good luck. <laughs> what about the players? Any players give it to you? I've seen you, I seen, I seen you in Libera a couple of times, uh, you know, smiling more than anything. You weren't really going at each other, but um, anyone else give it to you? Yeah, Liver was probably the main one. I remember the first contest in the game when I got the ball and I sort of held it in, took the tackle, and that's when – Liver had me on top. Uh, Liver was on top of me, and then you jumped on top with a flying <laughs> knee. Should have been reported. Please, no, <laughs> it wasn't. He was on top of me, and he's like, "Sorry, mate, I just had to get this one out the way." <laughs> so it's things like that. Things like that were pretty funny. So I was kind of just laughing most of the time when the boys try to, like, you either hit me or check me off the ball or whatever it might have been. So it was good fun. I, I, I loved the yeah, I loved the the moment. It was obviously a great great game of footy because um, it was close and neck and neck all game but also just enjoying it against you blokes as a sort of always touch on would be great yeah no well done kudos to you mate i um yeah, as i said i thought you did a really good job one thing that i uh, i must share that uh, we made a promise last week that whoever were to win the other person had to buy that person dinner and um you came through this year uh, with your promise because well we didn't know until obviously the result so when I got a nice feed at, at the pub up the road from my joint, but we actually won something, didn't we? We did, mate. I was waiting for you to talk about this. There was a raffle on, so we were like, righto. We didn't have any cash on us, so we had to go to the bar to get some cash out. <laughs> and we bought four tickets and we were like going through the numbers. We're like, righto, where's one and where's five? Because that's obviously our number. And we found like four sheets of, I can't remember what the actual number was itself, but no, I don't remember. There was a lot of ones and a lot of fives. And one of them got up and we won a meat tray. So that paid for uh, paid for my accommodation, mate, for you hosting <laughs> yeah, me on Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember when you were walking up because we were sitting away in the corner and I was like, yep, I'm not getting up, stuff that. And you're walking up and it was pretty busy because there was also the, the raffle and 
the footy was on and um, all I remember was someone saying, oh, you don't need that Dunkley. <laughs> you remember they said that and you went and, and, you went and grabbed your thing and uh, I'll grab the meat raffle and um, – and came over. But there was actually a Brisbane fan there too, wasn't there? He actually spotted you as soon as you walked in. Yeah, there was. There was one guy there that obviously was a Brisbane fan and um, it was, <laughs> mate, that walk up to get the meat tray was one of the most awkward walks I reckon I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> that was more intimidating people, than running out at Marvel. People knew people knew who we were and where we were sitting and stuff and it was a bit like, oh, this is awkward. As. <laughs> Do you know what was even more awkward? Well, it's not that awkward because you were a part of it. What about what about where we sat, the frame oh, that was yeah. behind us on the wall? I took a photo of it. It was a Western Bulldogs uh, 2016 Premiership. Uh, Unbelievable! Frame. Your signature and photo was there, so it was pretty funny. What a coincidence! Yeah, I know. It was good fun though, really good fun. And good yes, fun. I did Thanks. shout, so got the payback, <laughs> you mate. Did. You did well done. Thank you. Well, I'll let you know how we went. Obviously, I felt like our brand of footy we played this week was probably something that um, we've wanted to play for probably the last couple of weeks. And probably historically what we're more known for, um, and that's probably the defensive side of the game and the pressure side of the game. And I reckon you would have felt that, you know, well and truly being out there. Um, I don't think it was the most um, exciting game of football to watch as a fan in terms of offense and and scoring. But Mm. um, when we're out there, we don't really care. We just want to win the game. So, uh, yeah, I was very pleased with how we were able to defend um, and, and stop you guys from... You know, not being able to slingshot it uh, in particular because we know you like to, you know, as soon as you guys can turn the ball over, um, especially some of those shallow entries that we have, you're one of the hardest teams to stop going back the other way. So, you know, got to give kudos to, you know, our defenders and, um, you know, the way we, I guess, made the ground, you know, a lot more difficult to, to kick through us. Um, that was probably the most pleasing aspect from our point of view. Um, and I think another thing that, thing that I was extremely um, impressed with was, um, the way our, our forwards kind of responded from the week before. Um, I know we copped a lot, a lot of heat against the Saints and um, in particular our forwards. And then the week Jamara had, um, you know, it was pretty crazy the week that he had and, you know, the emotional toll that it took on him for him to come out and I think kick five straight, um, you know, didn't miss and was able to kick some tough goals and, you know, cap off uh, what had been a really challenging week for him. So they were probably the two most um, – and, and the fact that we actually, you know, got on the winners list for the first time this season. It's probably the three most rewarding things for the week for us. Um, and we reviewed it really well. And um, hopefully that can kickstart our season now. Yeah, because you've got a big game coming up this week, don't you? Richmond on Saturday, Arbo? Yeah, yeah. We've got a, um, you know, they're obviously missing Dusty and, and Jaden Short. And um, I think Jacob Hopper didn't play either. So, um, you know, and they hung in they hung in with Collingwood all the way at the end. Although, obviously, mm. you know, you look at the scoreboard, the start of the – you know, the first quarter, I think there was 13 scoring shots to one, but the fact that they were able to hang in from that and, you know, they they had glimpses of, of Richmond footy and how they wanted to play, um, we know that we're going to bring our best. We have to bring our best. Um, and we're playing at the G as well, which, you know, as a as a Western Bulldogs player, I think I've only won one game at the G. So, um, you know, I, it's, a, it's a tough ground to play when we don't play there in particular. And, and when Richmond have, you know, 60,000 people, screaming um it's going to be a challenge for us so it's something that uh you know we need to bring our best um and yeah hopefully we can get the job done um it's going to be off the back of our off the back of our pressure and defense and what we brought against you boys so um hopefully it's a little bit more exciting offensively though that'd be nice yeah i was gonna say how do you obviously there was a lot of focus going into last week about you know they get like the build up and obviously the disappointing start how do you regenerate that kind of energy as a group Oh, it's a challenge. It's a good, it's actually a good question because you you probably think, um, you know, externally you probably think that, you know, there's a lot of changes that happen and um, there's a lot of things you got to do and reinvent the wheel um, per se. But that's not what happens. It's probably more about building confidence and, um, you know, re- reiterating what we do well and why we do it well and the individuals that we have in our team and the strengths that they bring um, and being able to you know showcase that. Um, and for us last week, one of the, you know, one thing is, is a five day break. So, you know, we had to move on pretty quickly. And I think, um, you know, another thing is we actually, you know, we've, we've known that we haven't played our best footy and a lot of it has been between the eyes and, and the mental side of the game and, you know, really being able to, um, narrow in mentally on how we want to approach the game. And, you know, I think what we brought, which was obviously, 
you know, the pressure side, the tackle side. I think we're the number one pressure team for the round. I think we'll top five or top six in terms of tackling and sticking tackling. And I think those two, um, well, not I think, I know those two isn't a talent. It really isn't a talent. I mean, you could say a mm. tackle is a talent, but largely it's a, a want and, and a desire and wanting to do it. And and that was probably, you know, where we were starting the week off. And that was, you know, knowing that we came or wanting to know that we come with that desire and, and bring that desire and that's going to, you know, lead to us and then the scoreboard looking after itself. Um, you know, and the fact that we weren't able to do that in the first two weeks was something that we were extremely disappointed in. So, as I've, as I've just touched on, um, extremely pleased we were able to do that. And there's always um, room for improvement in our game and, and areas that we want to improve in, especially um, on the offensive side of the ball. But if we're bringing that desire and that, um, you know, want to want to defend really well, um, it's going to go a long way to us winning the game. So that was probably, you know, the main focus is going into the week um, for us. What about you? What about you guys? You, um, you know, obviously you're, you're one and two now. You're the same as us. You're coming up against, um, you know, probably the what everyone tips as the as the premiership favourites. Um, you know, early early season, they're red hot. Um, I know they like playing the Gabba really well. When I obviously played at the Pies, we, um, you know, we love playing at the Gabba. Um, how are you guys approaching it? Yeah, it's similar to what you just touched on, mate. I think you know, last week um, against you guys, we actually we we brought the right mindset. I thought, and we gave it our all, and. As I touched on, we weren't able to sort of execute forward of center and, and connect and obviously kick goals and kick a score that was going to put us in a position to to win the game. So I feel like we've we've shown that our defense has been really good over the over the first few rounds, and um, we're going to have to do that really well against the Pies because they like to move the footy, they like to kick it around and get you know handball receives and overlap and stuff like that. So. They are going really well. We had a look at them um, yesterday and today. Um, so, yeah, hopefully the we can beat them at the source. I think that's a big one. Uh, yeah, they're going to – obviously, they've got the players in there uh, with Tommy Mitchell coming in and obviously Taylor Adams, obviously a contested beast and, and Pendles goes through there. So, the ability to try and match them at the source is going to be a challenge for us. Similar to, similar to you guys um, last Thursday, I think – if we can, if we can win or halve that contest, then um, that'll go a long way into us uh, being in a position to be able to 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 win the game at the end of the day. But it, it's an exciting game, obviously, as you mentioned, one and two um, so far this year, and we're looking to bounce back after last week. So, um, yeah, really looking forward to the challenge, and we're really looking forward to obviously playing a great side again. And we've sort of played the, I think it'll be four teams now that are um, going pretty well. So. Uh, yeah, looking forward to it and can't wait to to get out there on Thursday night. Yeah, no doubt it'll be a challenge. Um, who do you who who does Fags try and stop in the midfield? I mean, there's Jordy Degoe, who I think's right up there in the coaches' votes. There's Nick Dacos, who obviously everyone's talking about how well he's going. Um, do you reckon do you reckon because I know Jared Berry went to Bont in that last quarter on the weekend. Do you reckon he goes to someone maybe? Or maybe you? Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I don't know. We haven't really talked about it. we we got captain's run tomorrow. So, yeah, we'll do our planning and stuff. But I don't think Fags is a huge tagger. Like, he went mm. to Bont in the last quarter because he was going pretty well and we didn't really want him to get off the chain when the game was close. So, to try and um, stem the flow a little bit and sort of stay ahead of the curve was the plan um, with Bonty. But, yeah, I mean – as you, you touched on, those guys are obviously going really well for him. And Geordie's, Geordie's so explosive out the front of stoppages and his ability to to finish on the scoreboard is incredible. So mm. he's going to be one that we're going to have to watch. And um, Dacos brothers as well, they're both going really well. So I feel like the the way to do it is as a collective group to try and try and negate what they can try and do as, as a team outside of the stoppage. So I feel like we'll go with that approach potentially, but who knows, find out tomorrow. Do you reckon Dan McStay will cop uh, some booze like you did on the weekend? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I don't think he will. I don't think he will. I feel like the Brisbane crowd will um, pretty good. You know, understand that they'll understand what he why he left, and um, obviously going really well at the moment too. So they'll be happy for him. Obviously a new start and and going well. So can't really complain there. He might have to ruck actually because um, see Collingwood's ruck stocks have uh, taken yeah. a hit with Darcy Cameron and Mason Cox. Yeah, they have. They've got. Oh, I think they've got one, one maybe two VFL yeah, yep, ruckmen yep. that they that they may bring in, or 
Dan McStay might have to ruck. So, but I, he remember he rucked last year in that prelim final, the semi final when Big O yeah, got dominated, knocked out. That's right, dominated and, and dominated. So, mate, there's no um, weak link in their ruck stocks. That's for sure. If they're gonna, mm-hmm. they they either play him in there or play the other two in there, and all of them have shown glimpses of of really good footy. So we're gonna have to be at our best to to try and um, beat him in that area. Yeah, I think the midfield's going to be an unbelievable battle. I wanted to, before we obviously move on from, um, well, not just footy, but our game as well, because there's a couple points I wanted to bring up. What about the the iconic photo of Jamar? It's going to probably go down for, uh, you know, in, in footy folklore, as you want to call it. Nicky Winmar did it um, all those years ago. And, um, you know, now, you know, obviously post-game, we've seen obviously the week that Jamar had, but the photo that, um, that went viral, um, you know, incredible moment, incredible moment for, you know, all of our Indigenous brothers and sisters and, um, you know, something that uh, I know he's extremely proud of. But, um, yeah, one of those things where, you know, I'll be, we'll both be able to look back on and be like, oh, we were involved in that game. Yeah, mate, I'll, I was I was pumped for Jamara. Like, I'll touch on it a little bit, but I feel like, as you touched on earlier, the way that he was able to come out and put all the stuff aside that he'd been going through was just incredible. And, yeah, I didn't get to see him actually at the game, but he texted me. Um, just after saying like, you know, well done, good to see you out there, love your work and, you know, miss you and mm. stuff like that. But mm. just the ability for him to channel all that stuff and then just go out there and play good footy was so good. And mm. I feel like that moment that you're talking about was just, it It just is an example of the person that he is and the character that he's got. And he's willing to stand up in those moments and stand up for what for what's right. So, it was great to see him do that, and yeah, it, as he as he touched on, it's going to be something that people will remember forever. And um, yeah, great moment in footy. Yep, we applaud him. Um, last thing on our game, we we, uh, we wanted Tommy, our producer, Tommy Sheridan, to um, <laughs> yeah to uh, decide who had a bigger impact, and he's actually come back and said, "Draw." <laughs> this is a I joke. Pers- I personally think you're way better. No <laughs> way. Yes, you were, mate. No way. <laughs> you were. Anyway, read out, read out his comments. Do you want to read it or do you want me to read out his comments? No, you read it, mate. You read it. All right. So he goes, this is his comments, Tommy's comments on the game. <laughs> I thought Dunks started as well as you could. Was really impressed with that first quarter considering the game and the heat early. Ads was like my calf muscles really warmed up <laughs> <laughs> the longest, the longer it went and was slick in traffic. And when the ball was on the deck. I did notice a contest late in the game that was kind of halved, but Ads ended up getting the ground ball. To be honest, that was because you outnumbered me at the uh, at the ground ball. But I dropped the mark, hey, so I'll give I you that a, one. I got a little, I got a little finger on it. <laughs> I think you both had an equal impact on the game individually, and both would have made the best for your side. Let's stick with Dunks buying dinner for Ads as the result of a last week's deal. So come on, Tommy, he's sitting on the fence. That's, we need a winner. That's shocking. That's shocking, isn't it? <laughs> we need a winner. Terrible. We absolutely need a winner. Maybe he. We he'll should get a fan this. vote out there or something. <laughs> All right, we'll get a fan vote. Fan vote. Who uh, had a bigger impact? No, mate, it was you. Definitely, it was you. You started the. No you way. started the game on fire, mate. And then you got crunched about five times from, you know, five of obviously ex teammates. So and actually, I thought you were going to have a shot. So you're going to kick your first goal for the Brisbane Lions against your old mob. Over your and I head. stood the mark. I stood the mark. I know you did. I know you did. You came from – I reckon you were half forward at the time. You came from half forward to try and send that mark because you were like, yeah, I tried he's going to have a thing here. <laughs> <laughs> what would you yeah. have said to me in that moment? I would have called you weak or something. <laughs> That's weak. I just That's would have laughed. Josh. I would have laughed. I would have said oh, center at me. I don't have a shot. No long points. Yeah, true. Nah, nah. Um, it was good. It was good. To the next game. Cannot wait. But um, a couple other cool moments in the um in the round of the AFL. Did you see Michael Frederick do that backflip? I did. I did, <laughs> mate. That was pretty cool. When I saw it, I was like, hang on a second. Did he just do that or was that something that <laughs> happened like at training? Because I was like, you can't. I've never seen that, that kind of yeah. thing in a game. The, the most impressive what? thing for me with Mo- Michael Frederick was he did it with about six minutes to go in the game in the last quarter. Yeah. That's ridiculous. How would you go doing that? <laughs> Can you do a backflip? No. <laughs> no way. Can you? you probably on a trampoline. No, nah, not standing. On a trampoline, yeah, but not, not standing. No, nah, I don't. I can, uh, I can front flip on trampolines, backflips. I just – I'm one of those dudes where – have you ever seen people who've, who've tried it where they – they jump, 
and then they forget the rest and just go straight on their back or land on their head. That's exactly what I do. What's the coolest celebration you've ever seen? What's your celebration? Your celebration is like, come on, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, that one. Come on. That's all I do, mate. <laughs> that is uh, – oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't um, – what's yours? Do you have one that comes to mind? The funniest one I've ever seen was when Drew Petrie kicked that goal and he's gone <laughs> – yeah. do you remember that? Yeah, he's done that. This one. Yes, 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 yes. I do one? remember that. Yeah. One it's of those. Started like this and it went like – It was a big moment. <laughs> that was I funny, remember- as. Speaking of backflips, I just got to put this out. I've always, I've said this story a couple of times. One of the most in, um, intimidating, I guess, moments in my um, footy career, and I wasn't even playing footy. It was our first week, and Josh Bruce can vouch for this because we were at the Giants together. So it was the first week at the Giants. I was seventeen years old. Obviously, never lifted a weight in my life. So no gym. I was, you know, ringing wet. I would have weighed sixty nine kilos or whatever. My first year at the Giants, we uh, we actually worked out of the RSL, so the Rudy Hill RSL, right? We actually used the public gym, so it was called One Fifty Five. We needed a swipe card, so we're this professional, you know, AFL club. We're we're embarking on our footy journey. Need need a um, use a swipe card. We used to use the swipe cards to get into the gym, and then obviously we we like cordon off a gym where there's all these you know obviously local people go there, but we're we're in this bright orange, you know, going over lifting forty kilos on the bar and squatting the bar because we're so weak. I remember I remember walked into the gym the very first time. The first guy I seen it was this short. He was really short, but he was. Built. He was really, really built. So he was doing, you know, as they say, ask the grass, squatting all the way down to the bottom, 150 kegs, six reps, would 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 rack it, come out of the squat rack and start doing backflips. What? That's, <laughs> that's what he was doing. And us 17 year olds, we were walking wearing this bright orange singlet. As I said, squatting the bar, looking at this like, what the heck is going on here? Wow. Yeah, mate, it was crazy. crazy. He was literally squatting 150 doing backflips. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It was a funny, it was a story I told yesterday and it just reminded me that it was funny. It was, um, yeah, quite a uh, welcome to our AFL moment for me. Moving on from Michael Frederick. Um, what about a couple of surprises? Uh, Geelong are zero and three reigning premiers, which mm-hmm. we haven't seen I don't think I think it was something like in the seventies, maybe when a team's gone zero and three post a post a um, you know winning a premiership. What's uh, yeah. you know you've been there, you've been in that situation, you have won, you know you've won a premiership, and then I don't know how you guys started the year after two thousand seventeen, but um, you know what's it like? Is there you know is there the hunt not there? Is the want not there? What is it? Uh it's a tough one to really talk about because I feel like, you know, they, they're a mature group, Geelong, mm. and they would know, you know, what's lacking at the moment. So I feel like they've – when you look at the teams that they've played, like they've played some pretty good sides. And yep. they lost again on the weekend to the Gold Coast Suns at home, as in the, at Gold Coast home. So mm. that's always a tough game for anyone, no matter who you are. So – People that can look into it too much, I feel like the Geelong Football Club would be, they wouldn't be too stressed out. They know exactly what's going on, things that they need to clean up, and they know that we've got 24 games of the year that they can, obviously 21 to go now, so 24, 21 other games that they can clean up and potentially win. Like They went on whatever, whatever it was, 17-game winning streak last year, and mm. I don't think they started last year too well either, and then they went on and won the flag, so... They know they know exactly what they're doing, um, and as I touched on, I feel like they've played some some pretty good sides in the you know the early rounds that they wouldn't be too concerned with. No, I think you nailed it. I think um, you know I think they they're so mature and the players that they have there um, you know are close to some of the best players in the comp. In Jeremy Cameron, mm. you know Tom mm. Hawkins, Paddy Dangerfield when he's up and going, Tom Stewart. Um, you know I think. Last year, as you said, they they I think they're in a similar boat, and and you know largely not many, you know experts and people really tip them to, you know go on and win the flag, and they were able to prove people wrong. So, um, you know, watching them play as well, you can still see that when they when they you know when they're allowed to do what they want to do and and maintain the ball and score, they're as intimidating as anybody. And you know they were right up it in the in the in the contest on the weekend against Gold Coast, and then obviously. You know, Gold Coast are no slouches. They're extremely hard to beat at home and 
um, you know, they were able to run over the top. So I've got no doubt that, you know, Geelong will turn it around. I'm, I'd be worried about the team, whoever's playing them this week, because no doubt they'll be coming out firing mm. and, and wanting, um, you know, wanting to uh, get their season rolling. Um, Jeremy Cameron's still uh, still wowing me with some of the Dominating. stuff that he does. You know what's funny? I must – I must um, – I've got to bring this up as well. Have you seen how, you know, once – you know, obviously, there's a bit of heat on on Geelong at the moment, and um, you know, I think the media and you know the newspapers and whatnot are, are coming after him, and you know, saying how they haven't really started the season well and um, whatnot, and you know how you know, like uh, a lot of people do, they try and find reasons why. I've seen um, you know people grab some snippets from you know when 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 Jezza was on you know the Oz American Aces with Tommy Sheridan, and how raw and honest he was, which is what we all want. We all want footy players, uh, to be honest, to talk about, you know, life outside of footy, what it's like celebrating a premiership. And Jezza, you know, did that. And it was a great episode to listen to. If you haven't listened to it, make sure you go on and listen. But it's funny because he talks about how he genuinely feels. And then fast forward, you know, six months later, there's they're bringing it up and saying, is that a reason why they're not going well? It's like, no. this, is why, this is why people don't, this is why players are so you know, st- play the straight bat whenever they get asked anything, whenever they, you know, want to talk about life or whatever it may be. They play the straight bat because they know it's going to come back or it could come back and bite them in the ass. What do you think? Well, I didn't. I haven't seen that. But if that's the case, that's that's terrible because, oh. mate, we, I reckon I talked about it last week or two weeks ago whenever we were touching on Jezza was how awesome it was to see him open up and be honest mm. and mm. how he's just himself and he doesn't care. Mm. Like he still wouldn't care about someone else saying that, or oh, because he's talking like this, this is why they're not playing so well. Well, have a look at like the way that he's going. <laughs> yes. He's still going well. He's still well, playing well, his role for the team. Agreed. One one of the, one of the points that was brought up was you know which was quite funny because and I'd love to know what you did. He was talking about how you know he was afraid to look at the dietitian in the eye post grand final <laughs> for the first month because he was you know drinking beers and celebrating the win and, you know, having hash browns and, and cheeseburgers and whatnot from Maccas. Is that – did you do the same thing when you won in 216? Well, pretty much? Yeah, well, pretty much, pretty much. We we had uh, – I had ankle surgery, so I couldn't run for oh, okay. 10 weeks. So I, I actually – yeah, I was, I was, I put on a bit of size myself. To be honest, I was, <laughs> but, I was probably but, the biggest but, I've ever, I've ever been. Was that because you were celebrating? Because you were still, you know, enjoying the fact that you'd won oh. a premiership and 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 obviously you couldn't run, but like that was more the point I was getting towards because he was talking about openly about, you know, he was still celebrating. Yeah, well, you, you're gonna celebrate for a certain period of time for sure. Mm. Like that's just a given. And how long you celebrate for probably depends on the break that you have and. I don't know. I feel like if you, if I was, if you know, if you were to win one now, or I was to win one now, you'd probably be celebrating for a good, yeah, three <laughs> three weeks. Like, yeah, no, well, I, that's, I, that, uh, that's just being honest. Yeah, well, mate, I know what it's like to obviously lose too. I and I celebrated what was a year, what was the year that we had, and making the grand final, and that was for a good, you know, week or so, and you go away and whatnot. But yeah, it's just interesting because, you know. I guess the the point that I'm getting towards is, you know, the reason why we do this podcast as well, we talk about people can learn a little bit more about us away from footy and, and we can be open and honest. But, um, you know, when things aren't going well, it just sucks that sometimes that gets, you know, brought up or drawn back into, oh, he's not professional enough or he's not, you know, this and that. So it's an interesting one. But as I said, no doubt Geelong will turn around. And, and as you touched on, Jeremy Cameron's still, you know, in my opinion, the best player in the game. I agree, mate. But on the flip side of it, obviously, we'll touch on Geelong being zero and three. The Saints, they're three and zero. I feel like this is a this is a different one because they've got a new coach, new game plan. All their players are going really well. They've got a full head of steam, and they've actually they're actually playing some really good footy. So, yeah, let's talk about them. It's obviously a surprise for a few people, but what do you think? Obviously, seeing it firsthand. Um, I wasn't playing, but seeing how good they were first hand when I was at the game, and um, you know, one of the things things that have struck me, um, you know, these the first three rounds is the way they've been able to defend. I think they've conceded the least amount of points, um, I believe so, um, to start the year off, which is obviously unbelievable. Um, you know, when I uh, when you think about Ross Lyon, you think about the defensive side of the game, and you know, no doubt he was going to bring that in, and the fact that they've been able to do that is impressive, but. <laughs> The flair in their offense, 
it's there. You could see that, you know, what they're committing on defense isn't affecting how they're, you know, moving the footy and how dangerous they are and, you know, how they're, you know, how well their forwards are going. You know, Mal- uh, Mason Wood has, uh, you now if people are talking about he's in all Australian contention, he probably would be already. Um, he's been, you know, the way he started the year off well. Their midfielders look unreal. Brad Hill looks like, you know, he's back to his best, which is always great to see because he's one of the great runners of our game, but one of the great ball users. Um, yeah, it's good to see. Um, you know, I like when, you know, I like seeing teams that haven't really been around the mark um, in, in years gone by now come up and, and really, you know, be around the mark and play really good footy and, and know what you're going to get from him. And that's, a, that's the St. Kilda team. And, you know, any team that comes up against them is going to be extremely challenging for him. It's the power of winning, isn't it? A winning culture, you can't beat a winning culture. And they're obviously feeling it right now with um, themselves being 3-0. and And it's great. Like you said, I think it's great for the competition. It's great for the fans. It's great for everyone out there that can see, obviously, the Saints who um, haven't probably had their their best few years over the last few years, be now at the top of the table and, and challenging some of the best teams in the comp. Moving over to uh, South Australia, Adelaide are the kings of SA. Yeah, all the, there was two derbies on, actually, the West Coast one and the Frio derby. Um, yeah. Obviously, that was a, a good game as well. But no, nah, the derbies are good. That was a good game. I enjoyed that game. Um, I, uh, I um, am very impressed by you know both the Adelaide teams. They were right into it. You know, from the get go, and and then right up to it, up until three quarter time, and then obviously Adelaide were able to run away with it. But you know, Porto are a really good side, um, and and you obviously seen that up close. But um, there's always a bit of extra spice in in the derby games. I'm um, I'm excited for you when you play against the Gold Coast Suns. Derby or derby? What do you think? What I've been saying, I think I've just been saying derby. Derby, yeah. I think I think that's a Victorian thing. I think if you were to, is it the South? Is it South Australians pronounce it derb? They don't do they? No, 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 no. No, nah, it might be West Australians. Maybe it's West Australians, yeah. Yeah, maybe it is. Maybe ask Tipper because she's a – although she's not South Australian, but she's obviously living there, so she might she uh, know. Won't have to ask her, yeah, but um, no, nah, it's Derby. Derby. Yeah, I'm keen for the uh, the Queensland Derby. I want to um, ask you a quick question um, about uh, some players in the, in the competition. So I've seen this yep. uh, list. I think Matty Lloyd did his um, – Best midfielders. I'm not sure if you've seen that. It was like top six midfielders. It's a great question. It's a great debate. Far out. It's a great debate because there's so many good midfielders. Um, did his top six? I'd love to know your. Or do you want to know the top six? Yeah, go. Because I remember. So he had Paddy Cripps at number one. Yeah. Then he had uh, Jordy Degoe number two. Then he had um, LDU Luke Davis Uniac number three. Then he had wow. yep. Then the Bont Bonty was four. And then you had both the Melbourne boys, so Track and um, and Clayton Oliver. Um, they were his top six. But uh, yeah, big uh, big praises to LDU. Although LDU has started the year off unbelievably well, and he was sorely missed for North Melbourne on the weekend. But uh, yeah, I'd love to know who who was your top three. Just off the top of your head, who's your top three? Top three, and it could be, be sorry, and it could be it doesn't have to be any. It could be whoever you think in the midfield. It could be someone else externally from them. Uh Top three right now, I'm going to say Geordie mm-hmm. in no particular order. No particular, yeah, no particular order. order. Geordie to Goey, mm, it's a tough one. I don't know whether to say who to say. Cripper, I think Cripper's obviously a gun. And one other one, Clayton Ola. All right, so it's the – okay, I'm going to play a little game in there. So you've just said Geordie, Clayton Oliver and Cripper. You got to do that game where it's start, cut, bench. So oh, okay. who uh, who are you starting out of those three right now? Starting out of starting out of those three, probably Geordie. Who are you benching? Who am I benching? Yep. Uh, it's out of, obviously out of Clayton Clary. Oliver and um, Clary, Clary, and then you're cutting Cripper. Cripper. Oh, Crip is going to be flattered. He's going to come out now and have 45 <laughs> and another 20 contested possessions like he did on the weekend. Yeah. No, they're, that's yeah, probably good. my – they're my top three. My three would be Geordie as well. Um, I'm going to say it, Bonty. Bonty because he was unbelievable on the weekend. And I'll probably say – I'm going to say uh, Clayton Oliver as well. And we'll move on. We won't play the game that I just played. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't no, do that. no, no, I'll do. I'll do one as well. I reckon 
My start right now would be Font. My bench yeah. would be Geordie. Yeah. And my cut would be um, obviously Clayton Oliver, which is very stiff. It's a good little game. It's oh, a good game. Maybe next, maybe like next week we'll do the forwards or the backs. Get a, show a bit yeah, of love okay. to the defenders. Yeah, let's, let's do, do it. it. Let's do it. But um, oh. no, we'll, mo- we'll move on from the footy. We've, we've spoken about our games. Obviously, your game against Collingwood at the Gabba, which is extremely exciting. My game Saturday against uh, Richmond um, at the G, which I'm extremely excited about. I'll be uh, watching your game closely. Hopefully, you go well. Usually, we talk about the NFL and the NBA first, but I'm going to go off limb and, and talk about uh, the, the netball, our, uh, our number one uh, favorite sport outside the AFL. Your girls are flying. Yeah, they are. They are the Adelaide Thunderbirds. I went and watched them on Saturday night. They were they played the Sunshine Coast Lightning, mate, and Sunny Coast are touted and have been going really well this year. Mm. So for them to come out, I think they won by twenty odd, maybe. Mm. It was incredible. I seen this. Uh, it was like a cli- it was like a clip of uh, the Adelaide um, defenders, and in the clip, I seen Tipper. She like did this sprint, and like. <laughs> I had to take a second look. I was like, whoa, she's lightning. I actually didn't even know that. Yeah. She's quick know, and she's got she hops. She's lightning. Yes. So she's got hops, mate. <laughs> who would win out of a race between you and her? Oh, probably her. sprint. She's quick. She's yeah. probably quicker than me and she can jump. I reckon she can jump higher than me, mate. Some of the balls that got thrown up high, she like jumped up and tried to grab yeah. onto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, unbelievable. unbelievable. How's she? Um, Pretty cool. How's she been going? How's she feeling? Yeah, she's feeling good. I think uh, this week was her first full game for the year. Uh, mm. I think she only played maybe a half against or two and a half quarters against um, the Firebirds in round one. And then obviously they got lights out last week. So um, didn't play a lot of game time there. But yeah, she's going well. She's she's really happy with where she's at. And she had a big preseason. I think I've talked about it already. And um, she's really confident in herself and the team obviously going so well. So it's uh yeah been a nice start for them. A um, little bit different for the Firebirds. They mm. I watched that game too, mm. and geez, the uh, well, Lara and Kimmy did really well. I thought, and yeah. um, they just couldn't quite get over the line. Yeah, it's probably been the story of their season so far. I um always I've you know me I'm pretty superstitious with a lot of things, and a lot of the times I think it's because I'm watching. So then I just turn it off. I'm like I can't watch this because I feel like I'm the bad omen here. Because um, really, oh well, no, not really. I end up. Rewatching the game, I turn it yeah. back on after about a minute. But um, it's been a bit of story of their season so far. They've they've been in the game, in the games most weeks, and um, you know they they were obviously in the last quarter overrun on the weekend, which I know is extremely disappointing for Kimmy. And, and you know I um, you know I wear the wins and losses as I know you do with both Lara and Tipper because um, we obviously talk about it. But, yeah, it's, um, you know, I think that if you look at the positive, the fact that they've been, a, been able to be in the games and, um, you know, be in a winning position will hopefully be able to um, translate that to a win, you know, in the near future. Um, they're playing in Melbourne this week, week, which is really exciting. I'll get to see Kimmy and Georgie. They come down and um, she'll be able to come to my game on Saturday and I'll, and I'll go to her game on the Sunday. So I'm extremely excited about that. Um, but yeah, we're both loving the netball at the moment, aren't we? Yeah, we are, man. How good's that? Get to see the girls over at Easter and spend some time with them. Do you reckon they yep. did that deliberately on the schedule, mate? Just looked after you a little bit? Uh, I like to think the netball Australia and the AFL, um, you know, AFL, whatever you want to call it, came in and settled. Adam Trelaw and, and Kim can uh, spend a quality time together, but uh, absolutely well, no way they me, did that. Mate. <laughs> they didn't do that for me. So. But it's good because I'll be able to have an Easter hunt for um, – you know, for Georgie, because you know I won't be having any for chocolate. Georgie. Yeah, you will. <laughs> no, you, you're will. a change. You're a change man these days. <laughs> I am. Now that you're gone, and uh, you know, I don't have to uh, worry about you bagging me. I um, I've actually loosened up a little bit and changed. <laughs> <laughs> what about the F1? I know um, you obviously stayed down. We played on the Thursday, and you stayed till the Saturday morning with me. Um, you went on the Friday. Uh, you love the F1, don't you? I do, mate. I love it. I went down to um, – we were in the – one of my mates from Adelaide, Matty, he uh, took me into the Ferrari marquee, which is right on the track. It was a pretty cool spot. Um, and we got to walk around as well and went through the paddock and um, saw Mickey, our, our mate, the trainer of – he's now the trainer of Yuki Sonoda. So mm. it was good to see him and a couple of the boys, saw Crozzy and, and Tio and 
Kappa and Jado and those guys. So it was nice to obviously catch up with all those guys and um, watch the the practice sessions over that day. And mate, the race was hectic. Did you see the race? Mm, I did see the race. It was crazy. Great race. It's it's crazy. Like oh, you think that all of a sudden it's going to be done, and then something yeah. happens. And yeah, actually, did you did you see how the crash happened? And then someone's been slit on the arm. Someone got a oh yeah because it was debris. There was debris. Debris. Yes. Yeah. Incredible. I don't know how what? that happens. Do you? If that was you, do you keep the debris and claim it to claim the fame? Absolutely. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah. It, it didn't look like a huge. It like didn't look like a huge cut on his arm. But mm. if you had the debris, it'd be pretty cool to take home and be like, "Oh, that's uh, Kevin Magnuson's car right yeah. there." It was just good that. Um, the weather wasn't that good on the Friday or the Saturday, but the Sunday actually, the weather ended up being pretty good, which is great, which is good for the race because obviously you don't want to see, you want to see good quality racing. But what about the NBA, NBA, NFL, Lakers? Yeah, Dallas, the NBA. Dallas, is- Dallas aren't going to make it. Dallas are gone, mate. Dallas are gone. The Kyrie trade just has not worked out for them, has uh, it? Which is what we said. Um, I reckon we said that when it happened. Both ball dominant mm-hmm. players, but. There's this stat out there going around. They were 96 percent chance to make the playoffs um, back in early Feb, and and now fast forward two months, they're like a six percent chance to make the playoffs. Unbelievable. When you've got Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving, crazy to think with the caliber of players that they've got in those two, that mm. they're going to miss out on playoffs. Like it just hasn't clicked. But mm. I feel like they'll learn a lot. Potentially, who knows? There could be another trade in the off season that happens and. Yeah, and they don't play together again. But who knows? The Lakers as well. They're um, they're flying. They are flying at the moment. I think they're uh, they're a huge chance. Like we talked about them being in the playing, and obviously the LeBron coming back, and now that well, when LeBron and AD are both healthy, it's going to be a pretty good team. Especially now that they've found down their mojo. Mm-hmm. It's funny because I was saying how, and you were saying as well that we don't feel like LeBron has that pull anymore. Well, oof, I th- feel like he must have listened to our podcast because uh, his last uh, <laughs> his last few games he's been unbelievable. He's triple he had a triple double the other day, but the way that he just was able to um, you know slow the pace of the game and and uh, really dictate the game was unbelievable. It's exciting because there's only three games to go, three or four games to go for most of the NBA teams left in the playoff series, which um, which for a lot of us, you know, especially me, we uh, the last like you know two weeks of the season. It's kind of just like, come on, come on, hurry up. They're playing – like they play guys who you've never heard of before and you're never going to hear them again and they literally go out there and stat pad and both teams put up 130 points each. So it's just like, come on, let's get the real stuff going. Yeah, let's get it going. I'm pretty keen to, to see how everyone goes. Who's your tip again? Who'd you tip last time we spoke about it? Uh, it won't, won't change. So from now, and we'll keep updating, but I'm going to stick with this, Phoenix Suns. The only the only Phoenix way Suns. I can change it. Yep. Only way I can change it is if there's an injury. Otherwise, I think Phoenix. You? Ah, uh, I've got a little bet on uh, the Denver Nuggets, but I think Boston will go all the way. Is that a uh, is that a cheeky bet on Dabble? Tommy Sheridan's uh, favorite uh, favorite uh, betting whatever you want to call it. Follow Tommy's know, tips. Probably. <laughs> Tommy's tips on yeah. We're giving him too much credit, mate, on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, we are. What about? What about before we move on from the NBA and probably wrap up the show? What about um, the MVP race? Because we, uh, I said, so I reckon two weeks ago I said um, Nikola Jokic and then there was a week there where they played terrible. Denver Nuggets played terrible and I'd say, yep, Joel Embiid. And now Jokic is back playing some really good ball. I think um, I think now it's going to be again Nikola Jokic. What do you think? I agree. I agree. Did you see that they changed the rule? Do they change to say that? The, to say the, that. the NBA awards. That's got to be how many games was it? 60? 65. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that. I love that. And you like that? You've got to be durable. Like yeah. Yes. Yes. You've got to be I durable. Totally You've got to be able to earn. You have to be able to earn that. So and do you that's think, a great thing. And do you think it should be based on how your team goes? So, say, for example, Russell Westbrook comes out and has, averages a triple double. His team finishes eighth versus, let's just say, I don't, I don't know, Steph Curry. Let's say Golden State finished top seed, but 
you know, averages 28 points a game, down on his normal average, but top seed, double the amount of wins. Do you, and the NBA and the NFL seem to reward those kind of um, players rather than the guys that, you know, are stuffing the stat sheet. Do you think that is the way it should be? Personally, I think that, yeah, you're playing well in a good team. I feel like that's better than if you're dominating and stuffing the stat sheet as a in a in a less likely team. That's my opinion. I'm with you, mate. I'm totally with you. And I think the American sports do it really well. The reason why I ask this is because this is probably for another episode and a long discussion. Our Brownlow medal, right? You can't have a team like what do you reckon the cutoff for a loss? So for for a team to lose, what should the the losing margin cutoff be for one of the hit their players to get you know three votes in the brown low, whatever it may be? Do you know what I mean? Do you not question I'm asking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three yeah. votes in the brown low. I don't think your team's win, uh, losing by more than two goals. Yeah, that's that's the craziest one when you see yeah someone get three votes after losing by thirty points. Oh, quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And look, I'm not saying they don't the player might not deserve it. Well, the player might deserve some votes, but probably not three. Do you know what I mean? So, I don't know. It's interesting. Yeah, I know I'd, love to, mean, I'd, love, I'd love to know what people think because I feel like the American sports do it really well in that regard. So, mm. that's probably going to favor Nikola Jokic because his team's going to finish top. Philly's going to finish fourth or whatever it may be. Nah, that's good, mate. Well, another good chat, another good episode. Um, thanks, everyone, for listening to another episode of the Ads and Dunks podcast. Uh, brought to you by the Oz American Aces. If you haven't already done so, as always, please subscribe to all the channels, social media and everything, YouTube. I think we're getting a good following and uh, really enjoying doing this stuff with you, Adzi. So thanks again, everyone, and we look forward to chatting to you all again next week. Thank you. Thank you.